What's up guys, thanks for joining another episode of Cars, Bikes, and Coffee. I am Kurt, and we are back. We are back and focused on the 260Z currently. Today, the goal, hopefully, is to get the engine completed and assembled. So, stay tuned. All right, so we want to get this engine built and assembled today, so hopefully we will be able to do it. And if you haven't seen the previous episodes where we built the bottom end and the head, go see those, links will be in the description. But what we wanna do is mate those together and get all the auxiliary pieces on, so that way we can get ready for the 260Z once it comes out of body and paint, which it's almost done. First things first, we wanna get the block ready for the head. And the first thing I wanna do is just make sure that top dead center is marked on the timing mark. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. All right, so this is a step that you don't have to do, but since I have the tools and it's relatively easy, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And that's to find the true top dead center for cylinder number one. So we've mocked up the timing cover and just loosely put on the uh, crank pulley. And as far as well, put on the timing gauge. And so what we wanna do is use our gauge up here to find where the highest point is, which is just above that five. And then we come down to the crank pulley and we line it up with our zero which we are just a hair off. So what I wanna do is just put a white mark at the true top dead center. All right, so now that that's marked, we have that perfectly at zero. So now what we'll do is go ahead and pull this off and then we can start assembling with the head. Now that we've removed the front items to check for top dead center, we've got our Woodruff keys in our crankshaft We've got our head dowel pins in and set. And now what we wanna do is go ahead and just clean the head gasket and get it ready for putting on the head. All right, so we've got the head and the block together and just a couple of main points. You want the crankshaft to be in top dead center and as well the cam with pin at the top. So that's top dead center. Also, if you're going to be working on one of the cylinder heads that has the oil drip line, go ahead and remove that. That way you can move the cam and as well install those two bolts in front of the cam tower, otherwise, it's too tight. So bolts were oiled and then installed and then you wanna work from the center out. And then we went ahead and did that with the torque. So everything's to spec. So now what we wanna do is focus our attention to the front of the engine, getting the timing chain and gears set and also cover the inspection plate, continue with the build.
So now we've got the timing chain and the gears all put on. A couple notes when you're adjusting this side of the tensioner, you want these to be parallel. So you have to move it in this fashion to make sure that the, the chain runs parallel to each other on these two points. So we've gone and torqued all of our bolts. We've put in the oil pump gear. Now this has a chamfered side which goes against the chain sprocket. So we put that on and we also put the alternator bracket on as well. So now what we need to do is prepare the timing cover and get that put together. Now what we wanna do is move our focus to the front cover. And the first thing we're gonna do is grab our crankshaft seal and we're gonna put it in place and using a soft mallet, we're gonna just tap it into place. And you want a, either a piece of cardboard or towel to protect the bottom of the cover. Now once the seal is flush with the lip of the cover, I'm gonna just take a little bit of assembly lube and put it on the inside of the crankshaft seal. Doesn't have to be a lot, just good to get some in there. And once that's done, we're gonna take the front cover over to the block. So at the block, what we wanna do before we put the front cover on is place our gaskets. On this side, we can just put it on. And when we put the cover on, we'll wanna make sure, since this one is bending a little bit, that the bolt holes line up. And then for the water side, what we're gonna do is place some sealant around the water jacket and just a light amount. And now with our gaskets placed, we're gonna carefully place our cover on. And a little persuasion. Now with the front cover in place, we're gonna take our stainless steel bolt kit and I'm gonna just place just a tiny bit of anti-seize on these bolts. And we're gonna start with the top and just start feeding them in. And we need to remember for this application that on this side, we need to make sure our seal lines up. And we'll line that up using a pick tool. And now that we've tightened our bolts as far as we really want to go, we're going to go ahead and torque them all down. Now what we want to do is go ahead and put the head to the timing cover bolts in. A little bit more anti-seize. And we're going to need an open end wrench to feed those in. And always make sure you do these by hand as much as you can to get them started. So now that we have the bolts from the head to the cover snug down, we're gonna go ahead and torque them. And the way we're gonna do that is using an open wrench. And the key thing here is you want to do that from the side. You don't want to make the length of the torque wrench longer. You want it to be about the same length. All right, so since we're up here, we're gonna go ahead and put the coolant inlet. And I had to make a gasket. For some reason, gaskets that are in the kit from Felpro are not the right size. So we put anti-seize on the bolts and a little bit of gasket sealant on both sides of the gasket. And now we'll torque these down to spec. And now for the distributor adapter, this one simply just bolts up. We put some anti-seize on the bolts and we'll torque these up. Now we want to put the damper pulley on. We're just going to line up 
the slot to the key. This will need a little bit of persuasion. And we'll torque that down. So we have a piece of wood in between the block and one of the throws of the crank. And we're just going to torque that down. All right, so we went ahead and cleaned the surface for the oil pan. And what we wanna do now is put the oil pickup tube in. So we have our new gasket. Line that up and our bolts. We'll tighten these down and then torque it up. All right, now what we're gonna do is go ahead and put some sealant across the front cover and the rear main cap. Now we're going to place our gasket, lining it up to our holes, placing our oil pan. We're going to place our braces, make sure this one goes on the side of the exhaust, and this one goes on the back. And now we just need to prepare all of our oil pan bolts. All right, so now that we have our oil pan bolts all set, just wanna show there are three sizes. So you have two long ones, several a uh, little bit long, and then some really short. Now let's go to the engine. And where your two longs are gonna go are in the back main. And then the medium size bolts will go on your braces along this side and then as well this side, and your short will go in the front of the oil pan. All right, so we're letting the Ultra Black set up and that's about an hour, so all of our bolts are in. They're not torqued yet. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is you'll probably notice I did not put the oil pump drive in. And the reason why is, is when we get the engine in the car, I'm gonna prime the oil pump and then I'm gonna run a dowel through the top and run the oil pump and make sure that the oil circulates first. We'll drop the oil pump and then we'll put the shaft in and install it right. So what I'm gonna do is just dry fit the oil pump for now, so it's with the engine. If you wanna see me install an oil pump and how to do that, I'll link in the description below. Now with the oil pump, what we're gonna do is there are four bolts. There are two short bolts. And two long bolts. All right, so we've torqued up the oil pan bolts and the way I like to do it is to sneak up to the torque. And what that means is I went to three foot pounds, then five foot pounds, and then seven foot pounds. And then I'm gonna let it rest for a while and then I'll go through it again and just double check. This is the one thing that is the hardest to torque once it's in the car, you know, with the cross member. So we wanna make sure we get that right. So now that everything is in, we need to put the water pump in and then the thermostat housing. So we're gonna rotate the engine and then take a look at those things. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is put our sealant on our gasket for the thermostat housing. And we just want a light layer. Do that on both sides. There's two bolts for the thermostat housing, one long and one short. And the one thing I will say right away that I'm leaving these old sensors on for now and I will replace them once we're ready for coolant. And we put our anti-seize on our bolts and we'll run those in and then torque them up. 
Now I am going to just install the thermostat dry for now and put the gasket in dry as well. And I'll make a note to double check and seal that up when we go to install. So these I will just snug up. So now what we wanna go ahead and do is the water pump and we're going to put our sealant on both sides, thin layer, and then we will install the water pump and tighten it to spec. All right, so we've got the engine assembled. There are a few things that we're waiting for, you know, mechanical fuel pump cover, need to put the oil sender on and of course the oil filter and the alternator. We do have the valve cover off to the Z store for their acrylochrome and that's like a powder coat that has a mirror finish. So it is coming together. What we're gonna do once the body comes back from paint, which should be soon, We'll get this installed and get it started. So next what we're gonna do is start working on the intake manifolds and the carbs and get those all cleaned up. I'm also gonna do some plating. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check it out. So thanks so much for watching. If you guys like what you see, consider subscribing. Until then, you have a good one.